Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Civilizations, which is the sequel to the wonderful dice rolling game CV, which was a game where players built the CV of a person's life, all the way from childhood to old age. And now in this game, the sort of semi-sequel, or at least kind of on the same line, we're not building a CV or a resume for an entire life, we're doing it for an entire civilization. Instead of from childhood to old age, this is from prehistory up to modern day, where our civilizations will develop different ideas ideas that define who we are and also scores points. So let's jump right into it. Now I'm going to be doing a two-player run through today. And it's interesting, the game comes with rules for two different ways you can do a two-player game. You can play two-player that emulates a three-player experience or a two-player game that emulates the four-player experience. Now right now I'm going to show you how the three-player experience works, even though there's only two players. Me, I am the green player. Jen is player two. She's the purple player. And the dummy player, Tula, our beagle, who is not an actual competitor, this is just a dummy who doesn't Really making decisions, just does automated stuff, is the third character. And she's just here to basically affect area majorities and stuff like that. It's really me, green, versus Jen, purple. Right, so, beginning of the game, everybody gets their, their deck of eight cards, and everybody starts with three goods, one wood, one stone, one wood, one stone, and one food, also known as a Pac-Man. Although, I guess they're little cheese wheels. All right, so I've got my starting goods, Jen's got her starting goods. The dummy doesn't have any because the dummy is not actually playing the game. But the dummy is the first player. So that means the dummy is the first player to play cards. Every round during the order phase, for, in a round, we have the order phase, the action phase, the development phase, and then the cleanup. So during the order, each player, including the dummy, is going to play two cards. One face up in public knowledge and one face down in secret. So the dummy player doesn't think about this at all, just chooses two cards randomly. Whereas me and Jen, of course, will be thinking quite a bit about which cards are the best to play. So let's see what the dummy has in mind. First, they play a card face up. Logging. They want some lumber. All right. And one face down. All right. So now it is my turn. Uh, during, I have to play two cards. And here's where the thinking starts. Because as a general rule, for all but one of these cards, you get the best return if you do something at the same time one other player does it. Like this hunting card. If I want to go hunting, if I am the only player to choose to go hunting, I will get two food. But if I do it at the same time one other player does it, each of us gets three food. And if I do it when everybody is chasing after food, then um, everybody only gets one. So you do not want to be doing something at the same time everybody's doing it. So like right now, I can see the dummy player is going logging. So if I choose logging, that means, hey, I did it and the dummy did it. So each of us, although again, the dummy doesn't do anything. The dummy doesn't score points. The dummy doesn't earn cards. The dummy, the dummy just only plays cards and that's it. So if I play logging at the same time the dummy did, I'll get three lumber. Um, but here's the deal. If I play logging and then later on Jen also plays logging, then all three of us have played it and I only get one lumber. But what the heck, getting three lumber is pretty good. So I'm going to play two cards. I'm going to play my logging face up. Now Jen knows I am on deck to get three lumber. And so she's got to decide when it comes to her turn, is she going to play logging as well to minimize how much lumber I'm going to get, or is she going to try and do something on her own? Now I've got to play one more card. It's totally face down. And Jen won't know what that is. I don't know what this is. If I knew what it was, I would do something to, I'd use that knowledge, but I don't have it. So what else do I want to do? Now I'm planning. I'm hoping that I'm going to get three lumber right now because I'm piggybacking off of the dummy player. After we're done playing all our cards and getting our resources, we are then one at a time in turn order. Although again, the dummy never does this, so I'll grab and then I'll gra Jen will grab the opportunity, one of these four cards. These are ideas that represent our civilization. So will my civilization get the bright idea of feline domestication, optimism, daggers, or solitude. Each one of them gives me different special powers. Each one of them scores me points in different ways. And I got to be thinking about what resources do I want to grab. If I'm going to get a bunch of lumber, then I'll have, th oh, well, I'll have four lumber, one food, and one stone. That would be enough to get solitude, which as an idea means, well, first of all, it's worth one victory point at the end of the game. Victory points are these little smiley faces. They're happiness. You want to be happy in your civilization. So if I get this for the rest of the game, once per turn, if I do a solitary action, I do an action that nobody else does, I can convert one stone into one happiness. And that's a really good return. So I might want to collect a lot of stone by quarrying, and then if I'm the only person to do something, I can start converting that stone into victory points. But let's see, if I have a bunch of food, if I get some more food, then I could go for optimism, which again gives me a point. And whenever I do an action that a lot of people are doing, 
um, I get one of any good of my choice. So it's kind of a bad thing to do something at the same time everybody else does, but hey, I get one free bonus, so I'll do better than everybody else because I'm optimistic. Feline domestication needs food and stone. I'm not gonna be able to get this because I can only do one more car. Well, actually, that's not true. So I know I'm, or I hope I'm gonna get three lumber. The other card I could play, and again, I'd be playing this in secret, I could play trading. And now this is an interesting card. This is the only card that breaks the paradigm. Normally, you want to do something with one other player or by yourself, or the, at the, the worst thing you want to do is do it every time everybody else. But this trading is the one action you want to do by yourself. If you do uh, trading by yourself, you can convert one good into three of one other type. One good into three goods. If you do it with another player, one good turns into two goods. If you do it along as everybody else, it's just a one-to-one -one conversion. But if I do this and do this by myself, I'm, I'm going to get a bunch of lumber, and then I could convert one of those lumber into three of something else, and then I'd have a lot more flexibility. So I'm going to go for it. I'm logging, and I'm trading. And I am really hoping that the dummy player is not trading, but I have no idea, no way to know. And now it is Jen's turn. She is the last player to play cards. She, as the last player, has the most information. She's going to get last dibs on whatever cards are out, but she can make arguably the most informed decision because she can see logging and logging have come out. But she has no idea what these are. So now she knows if she does logging, then um, it'll really kind of scupper my plans because I'll only gain one. And so, what if Jen wants to, what Jen could do, now this would be interesting, Jen could play logging, knowing that it'll slow me down, because three people are playing logging, and she could also play doubling. And if she is the only person who doubles, she, or if, if, one, if she herself, by herself, or only one other person does it, she gets to double the action of the other card. So she would end up making two lumber, whereas I only make one. So she could slow down my ability to make lumber and make more for herself. And, um, you know, or she could say to heck with it, stay away from logging. But if she knows if she does, I'm going to get three lumber, and that's a big deal. Um, so if Jen's going to do that, she wants to make sure she does something that she really benefits from. I mean, she could double anything. Uh, you know, she could double slacking, which if you um, slack by yourself, you get one victory point. If you slack at the same time one other player slacks, you get two victory points because you're happy for resting. If you slack when three or more players do it, you get nothing. Um, and again, she has no idea what these things are. So what is she going to do? Now, she could also say, well, to heck with it. You know, if she knows I'm going to make a lot of lumber, her action could be to steal. And again, you want to steal when another person does it, because then you get to steal two things. If you steal by yourself, you only get one thing. And if you steal when a lot of people are stealing, you get nothing. You know what? I think Jen is going to steal. She'll play that face down, and she will... <laughs> and now she can do cunning. If she is the only player to be cunning, she can get two of any goods that she wants. Um, let's see. What does she want to do? Or she could steal a second time. She could basically steal twice, which means if um, she's the only person stealing and uh, she doubles, she would get to steal four things. What the heck? Let's say that's what Jen's going to do. All right. So we've all played, and now once everybody's played, we reveal all the secret stuff and we read them and weep. I am trading. Jen is thieving. I knew she was doubling something, and she's thieving. And now, what did Tula do? Trading. No! Tula, what are you doing? All right, so remember, trading is the one card where you want to be by yourself. I was hoping I'd be able to turn one into three, but instead, I'm only going to turn one into two because Tula also played trading. And Jen, well, um, she, she's relatively happy. I mean, she kind of hoped if there had been some thieving going on, she would have been able to steal two things. Instead, she's only going to steal one, but um, she will get to double it, so she's going to steal two things. Okay, here we go. Now then, like I said, uh, well, we have finished the order phase. The next thing that happens is the action phase, where we resolve each of these in order. First, if anybody thieved, we do that. Then if anybody logged, we do that. Then hunting, then coring, then cunning, then slacking, then trading. We do these in that order. So did anybody thieve? Yes, Jen did. Was she the only one? Okay. If so, then Jen can steal one item. And um, she'll go ahead and steal from me. Let's see here, because she's, there's nothing to steal from the dummy. You can't steal from the dummy, because again, they're not a real player. They just count for the purposes of card totals. So does Jen want to steal my food? My, well, now Jen knows I'm going to get some lumber, and she knows that I'm going to get, and she knows I'm going to be able to convert something into something else. What does Jen want to get? Let's see if she's, um, now she's going to get to thieve twice, though. She's going to be able to steal tw um, uh, two things from me, because she's going to get to double. So, what two things is she going to take from me? I guess. She'll just go on ahead and take my food and my stone. 
which gives her two food stones so she could get feline domestication. All right, so her thieving was done. She doubled it. Now let's move on to logging. Did anybody log? Yes, we both did. So since both of us did it, two of us are doing it. Hooray, we both get three lumber. One, two, three. And again, the dummy player doesn't care. So I got three lumber. Jen's got all the rest of my stuff. That's it for logging. Did anybody hunt? No. Is anybody quarrying, making stone? No. Is anybody cunning? No. Is anybody slacking? No. Finally, is anybody trading? Yes. And unfortunately, two of us are. So that, uh, that means I don't get as good a return. I was hoping I'd be the only one to trade so I could get the best. But when two people trade, uh, we each turn one of our goods into two of something else. So I'm going to turn one of my lumber into two of something else. And I'll turn it into two food. Because that means I still have the opportunity to get opportunism or optimism, which needs two lumber and two food. Okay, so that was that. We have finished all these actions. Now, all the cards we played, basically, they um, just go off to the side of the board face down. They've been played. And there's a minor memory element to this game in that you have to try to remember, right, who played what when? Has everybody played their trading card? Maybe now's a good time for me to trade, etc., etc. So all these go into face down piles. I'll just put them up there. And we are done. Or actually, yeah, we, or we now we go on ahead and we do the development phase. In turn order, and again, the dummy is the first player, so they don't care, so I'm the next. In turn order, we buy something. I'm going to buy optimism. All right, which cost me two food and two lumber. I'm an optimist. And from now on, I actively want to do actions in a big group. If I see two people have done something, I want to be the third player because while they will be kind of minimized what they get to do, I still get something out of it because I'm a born optimist. All right, and so, and then a new card comes out immediately. And now it's Jen's turn. And let's see. Yep, of all these things, Jen could either get solitude or she could get feline domestication. Either one of them is worth one victory point at the end of the game. The solitude means she wants to do things by herself. Feline domestication means that um, when your action gives you nothing because it was a triple action, gain one smiley face. So now that's interesting. That's kind of like the opposite of this. If I am now kind of incentivized to try to force triple actions that might hurt Jen, if she gets into a triple action and gets nothing for it, um, you know, like if she if a triple slacking or a triple thieving, she at least gets a victory point um, because, hey, if she doesn't get to do anything else, at least she gets to play with her kittens. So, does she want that or does she want to chase after solitary actions? Because she cannot get dagger or seller with the stuff she's got. Um, da, 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 da. I think... Oh, wait, no, no. She can't get solitary. She needs two lumber. She only has one. So, she will, in fact, domesticate cats, which was two food, two stone. Okay. And another card comes out. And now we do the cleanup phase. I think it's a cleanup phase is when everybody puts their cards away, right? Oh, yeah. Well, first of all, the main thing is the uh, player order marker goes clockwise. So now in the next round, I am the first player. And, um, you know, that's it. So we're on the next round. I'm the first player. So uh, I am going to pick two more cards. And I'm already starting to forget what has everybody played. Okay. What do I want to do here? I've got one lumber. Let's see, I need two lumber to be able to get either of these, to get either solitude or sword, but I also have a situation where I, but now this is going to be hard for me to be able to force a triple action because I'm the first player. Let's see here, and what am I going to do? Am I going to try and double a, another action? Am I going to thieve and try to steal from Jen? If, and if, if you're playing the two-player game like this, uh, if you get to do a double steal, one would come from another player, the other would come from the bank, since there is no third player to steal from. Do I want to do some cunning? That lets me, if I'm lucky, I can get, well, one of anything, or two of anything, or nothing, if I'm unlucky. Do I just want to grab a lot of food? Or do I want to grab a lot of stone? I need two stone to get a sword. Let's see. So I could, say, go for quarrying and thieving and try to get that. Yeah, what the heck, let's go for it. I'm going to go for quarrying. That is public. And secretly, I'm going to try and thieve that wood from Jen. Because if I can get the two stone in Jen's wood, I'll have enough to buy a sword. So, or to have the idea of a sword. So I've gone. Now it is Jen's turn. She's got to play two cards. And let's see. What is she thinking she's going to do? Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see here. Well, she knows I'm going quarrying. So what the heck? She'll go quarrying as well. Which means um, now we're each going to gain three stone. And if the dummy player does it, hey, I get something for it. And Jen gets something for it because we both have situations where um, we don't mind if triple actions happen. 
So, and what's she going to do in secret? She will do that action, all right? And now the dummy player just comes along and as a dummy just says, or, 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 I will quarry. Don't know. Wow, that's totally random. And uh, they will also choose a face down. Okay, so we now reveal again. And I reveal that I'm a dirty thief. Jen reveals that she wants to quarry and then trade. And the dummy player reveals wants to double the quarrying. Okay, let's resolve this again. First of all, has anybody gone thieving? Yes, I have. And in fact, I'm the only person to go thieving, which means I get to steal one thing, and I just took all of Jen's lumber. My plans are coming to fruition, Muha ha ha So, and nobody else stole, so now we move on to logging. Nobody logged, we move on to hunting. Nobody hunted, we move on to quarrying. Hey, everybody quarried, which means everybody only gets one stone. Jen was hoping to get three, but she ended up getting one. But, when, uh, remember, my optimism, whenever I do an action that three or more people did, I get one good of my choice. So what do I want to get? Um, oh, well, the other stone, of course, so that I can get my sword like I'd originally planned. And Jen, with her feline domestication, when, uh, oh, no, hers is when an action gives you nothing, get, um, right, you, you get to, because you, you get a, a victory point. So Jen's felines did not help her out here, so... And the dummy player doesn't collect. That's it for quarrying. Now we move on to cunning. Nobody did that. We go on to slacking. Nobody slacked. And finally, trading. And Jen's very happy. She traded all by herself, which means she gets the best result of it. She changes one good into three of another type. So she'll give up the one stone she got. She gets three things of her choice. It has to be something other than stone. Looking around, I think she'll take lumber because then she might um, be able to start working towards that seller. So she will take one, two, three goods. Okay, that was it. And so we are all done with our second set of cards. And we are going to, once again, start buying stuff. Now I'm the first player, so I get first dibs. Hey, I've got all the resources I need to get myself a sword, which is once per turn, when I do thieving successfully, I steal an extra thing from one of my victims. So I'm a better thief. Now, unfortunately, I'm not going to get to use that right now. Hmm, actually, well, because of that, maybe I should take the seller instead. And I'd still keep a stone left over if I grab the seller, which I could also grab. At the end of the game, I can change three food into one victory point each. So if I have excess food, yeah, so we, I mean, um, I get victory points equal to three food. <sighs> Do I want the sword so I can be a better thief? But here's the thing, I've already used my thievery this age. The gameplay takes place over three ages, so I'm only going to get a chance to use the sword's power twice. The seller, I think, is going to give me potentially a better return. So I'm going to take that instead, and it means I... And so now some new stuff comes out. And now it's Jen's turn. She has three lumber. That's not enough to buy anything. So Jen is SOL this turn. She did not get to buy anything. Okay. D -d -d. And let's see. The dummy player, of course, once again chooses nothing. So we are done with that round. Jen is now the first player. And Jen is down to four cards. Here's what's going to happen. She's going to play two. Oh, dummy's play two. I'm going to play two. And then the final two will not get played. We only play six out of these eight cards every round. So this is Jen's last chance to do something. She could be cunning. She could go logging. She's certainly not going to do that because she has plenty of wood already. She could slack to get some victory points, or she could go hunting. If she wants to get something before the time is up, she probably wants to go hunting. But does she play that face up or face down? Now she has to start thinking. She has to remember. Who has already played hunting? Did I hunt already? I honestly don't remember. Did the dummy player hunt? Hmm. I mean, is she likely to be the only person to go hunting right now? If somebody else hasn't gone hunting, does she play it face up so that the other person says, oh, I'll go hunting too, so that she'll get three instead of two? And what is the other thing she's going to do? Is she going to be cunning? Is she going to go logging? Well, she's certainly not going to log. She has plenty of lumber. Um, plus, she knows I went logging, and she knows that, well, actually, so she does remember, because in the first round, I do remember this, that the dummy and I both went logging, so if she plays this, she's, she's going to be by herself, she's only going to get two. And she already has three, so that doesn't make much sense. Cunning, if she isn't alone, and, no, and nobody's done cunning, she remembers that, so there's a good chance another person's going to do cunning, so she could get two goods of her choice. So should she play that face up or face down? Or does she just want to go slacking and potentially get one or two victory points? And remember, if she gets nothing because three people do these, she gets a victory point. So it's not the end of the world if too many people do this. And nobody has been cunning. Nobody has gone, been slacking either. So all three of us had the chance. Either one of these might get a triple play, which means Jen could come out on top because at least she'd get a victory point for it 
if she gets nothing. So I think she will choose cunning. All right, and so these cards are not going to get played this age. Now the dummy player comes along and says, dur, 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 I am dumb. I will play this and this. And he's out. And so we have no idea. And so now it's my turn. What am I going to do? All righty. So if I hunt, I'll get three food. I can see that. And I'm trying to remember, I honestly, for the life of me, I do not remember now if the dummy player is done hunting. I think I'll go hunting so I can get some more food, so I can get the best return. And if I double, I could get six food. I'd be set for life. Or I'm thinking I could go cunning, or I could, you know what, I'm going to double. All right, so there we go. So that's that, everybody. This is the final round. Let's reveal. Moment of truth. I'm doubling my hunting. Jen is being cunning. And what did the dummy player do? Thieving! Dun, dun, dun! Okay, now, the thief... Uh, the dummy player never does any of these actions, so he's not going to thieve, but that means, well, we'll see what it means. Are we going to thieve? The dummy player would, but the dummy player doesn't ever, never does any action, so that's it. Logging. Um, nobody went logging. Hunting. We both went hunting, but I doubled it, so I get six food. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And Jen gets three. And that's it for hunting. Quarrying, nobody went quarrying. Cunning, Jen was cunning all by herself. That's kind of a bummer. She gets one good. What does she want? I guess if she doesn't have any, she'll take some stones. So now she has a nice variety of everything. And um, that was it for cunning and slacking. The dummy player slacked. He, if he were a real player, he'd get a victory point. But And now trading, nobody traded. So that's it. So now we buy our last good of the age and Jen gets first pick on whatever she wants. She's got, she could buy anything, I think. No, she only has one stone, so she cannot get the sword. <clears throat> Let's see here. For every. So if she is a positive person, which is different than optimism, she can buy any tool. I believe this is a symbol for tool for one less. So that makes tools cheaper for the rest of the game. The dagger, once per turn, when you steal from somebody, wow, if you had both of these, when you stole, um, when you, you get, wow, that'd be pretty cool to have both the dagger and the sword. But we're playing a friendly game. Nobody went for either of those. So does Jen want to be positive or does she want to be solitude? Let's see. I think uh, she'll try to be positive. Um, right, so that costs her a food and two lumber. And now she has two victory points. I've got one victory point and potentially more if I've got a lot of food. And hey, I've got a lot of food. If I save some of this food for the end of the game, for every three food I've got at the end of the game, that's a point. So I'm sitting on six points right there if I never use that food to buy anything, if I store it all in my cellar. Right, and uh, so a new thing came out. And the dummy player says, uh-uh, I'm not buying anything. And so we are done with the first age. We move on to the second age. And we get all our cards back. So it begins anew with the dummy player choosing, and then I choose, and then Jen chooses, we reveal. We basically do this through three ages. When the third age starts, any of the, these are the age one, or age one and two cards in here. Uh, any that are left over when the third age starts gets dumped. And for the uh, end of the game, we are all age three all of the time, where you have a lot of opportunities to turn like um, you know residences into points, or just get a whole bunch of points if you have a whole lot of food, or uh, if you have a lot of stones. So the last age, developing the internet, or postmodernism, or tablet computing, are good ch are chances to make lots of points based on what you've done in the first and second age. The second age pretty much plays exactly like the first. We're starting over from scratch, and that, folks is pretty much how you play civilization. You go through three ages, at the end of the game, you tally up your final score, and whoever has most points wins. Now, if you're curious to see how a four-player game works, or by which I mean the two-player variant that emulates a four-player game, you can hit the I to go to the extended playthrough, or alternatively, you can go to Final Thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.